Yeah, uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Facebook. Good morning, Facebook, uh, wherever you are in the world, and good evening. Uh, this is Who Are We Today? Grow Your Life Tribe. <laughs> uh, you can see <laughs> this is working well. You can see the graphic which Tina made earlier, and uh, it's getting a lot of praise. And we're just going to share the show. So bear with us a moment, and then we'll come on screen. So settle into your seats because this is Facebook Groups Part 2 because last week's show uh, we did talk about groups and we covered a lot of ground, uh, but we might have got sidetracked. So here we are <laughs> with Part 2. And I'm sharing out to my timeline. Um, and I'm sharing as well. Um, yeah, I good. encourage you all to share if you know anyone who's interested in how to use Facebook gro groups to grow your audience or to grow your live drop. Share this out and we will be getting started in just a moment. Indeed, this is the new sharing your show routine because um, we found that it works better manually. So if you are seeing this live, then uh, please do share and Tina and I are sharing at the moment synchronized sharing and we're going hopefully if we're going to the same group we apologize um, yeah I've um, got um, be livers repurposing in my page so all right okay I've got my page LVS 17 so I'm ready when you are Okay, just a minute. And, okay, all good. And we're back. And we know that we're live because if I take that off screen, we can see ourselves. So, hide and uh. First thing we're going to say, as we do with all the shows, is a welcome to the show. If you're watching this live, thank you. If you're watching the replay, enjoy. Um, anything we've missed? No, nope. other than if you're watching live or in replay, either one, be sure to comment. Um, let us know what you're thinking, if you have any questions, and also share. Indeed. And I'm just putting the link in to join us on camera that too so if you have um if you've been using facebook groups uh, for business marketing or to grow your live audience we would love to have you join us today so um follow the link that stephen is sharing there and come on screen with us uh, otherwise uh, stephen has an agenda laid out and we'll do our best to stick with it and not stray from it this time <laughs> <laughs> no i don't matter if we do i mean this basically i've got to say this i don't know whether you can see this tina but I've got a frame for today, and that's the frame because I'm in holiday mode. I'm winding down till we go to Germany. So <laughs> uh, you, there's a beach ball there and palm trees, and it looks nothing like where I'm going, but it does look holiday like. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is Grow Your Life Tribe with Tina and Stephen, and our topic this week is Facebook Groups Part. Two, if you've got any questions, then please ask. If you want to come on camera, as Tina said, then please come and join us. And uh, we talked last week about inviting people to a group. So shall we just recap on that? Because that's important to get it started right, right isn't it? Absolutely. Um, we, we went over creating the group um, also, but I think most yeah. people know how to create groups and and how to attach their group to their Facebook page. If you're unaware of that, um, that's a relatively new feature, um, the ability to to add group to your Facebook page. So in the left-hand column where you see your tabs for posts and videos and so on, you'll see you can add a, a tab there called groups and you can um, list all of your groups there that are associated with your business, which is uh, great for people who have businesses or they want to segment um, and have groups specific to either certain products that they sell or mm -hmm. um, or however they want to kind of mix those up. Sometimes 
sometimes it's necessary and sometimes it's not to segment. It just depends on how large your business is. <laughs> that, that, that's true. And just to, to our first sidetrack of the day, I did notice on my own personal profile yesterday that you can add all the pages that you're an admin of to your personal profile. And that's obviously helps. If you could add, add the groups as well, Facebook, that would be good. So yeah, I mean, invite, inviting people, there is in every group a button that says add people and you can just invite a whole group of people. Uh, that's the surest way to actually annoy folk. Um, if you go, <laughs> well, how many times do we go? First thing in the morning, you go onto Facebook, well not, second thing in the morning after the coffee, you go onto Facebook and you find you've been invited to several groups and you don't know what they're about. And the, yeah. the, re the reaction is, well, why me? And we say our first hey of the day. Hi, Michelle. To, to Michelle. Hello, now, Michelle. And, you know, other than your club's friends, the people who always support you and everything you do, um, aside from those folks, when you're inviting people to groups, um, make sure that the person you're inviting has an interest in the group um, that you're inviting them to. And we talked a little bit about this as well, about um, making your groups narrow and niche specific. Yeah. They're going to be much mm. more successful if they are, as opposed to just a general type of group. Um, I was actually even reading an article uh, yesterday from someone who's been very successful using groups for their business. And, and he said um, to go even more specific than you would even think. So if you're building a group for dog trainers, go more specific, say dog trainers uh, for Labradors. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and you will just get a more engaged group. Your group may be smaller, but your engagement will be better. And that's really what you're looking for in, in the group. I mean, you have a Facebook page for general views. You don't want that same thing happening in your groups. You want the groups to be um, much more narrow and specific and more engaged than your general page. In, indeed, because the, what you don't want, you can't be all things to all people, can you? I mean, if you put up a group which says live video, then it's not tight enough. If you put up a group which said be livers, then people know that when they go in the group that uh, it's about be live.tv because it says so on the door, on the about section, it says exactly what it is about. So it's not about all live video, it's about be live.tv. And Tina and I are moderators in there and we spend some of our time talking gently to people and persuading them not to post about other platforms uh, so make it uh, as tina quite i said the more specific you are the more chance you are to get people who are actually interested and that down the road when we come to broadcasting in the group that helps that people know what you're going to be talking about um so inviting people we find i find that if you invite people personally uh even if it's a cut and paste message and you're just changing the name each time uh, for the first 50 or so people who are inviting the group, you can do that in an hour to two hours, and that gives you a solid foundation. And because you're inviting people personally, you'll think twice. It's nobody, it's no use at all inviting somebody to a group which you know they won't be interested in. So you're the filter. You're saying, right, okay, I know this person might be interested. If they're not, they're going to say, no, we're not, before they actually get into the group. And that, it does give an extra step. It does mean that you're pre-qualifying everybody who arrives. So be kind to people at the beginning. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, again, we were covering the ground that we did last week, but admins and moderators. Um, I mean, in the Belivers group, we've now got 17 admins. Um, so you can never have too many, but you should have at least two, shouldn't you? Yeah, and I think people are eager to help particularly if you if you will have several so instead of just putting all the responsibility on one person's shoulder you know say i'm looking for four admins and then people feel a little bit better about volunteering because they know that they're going to have help and so mm. I, you know you can't I, I agree you can't have too many um, admins as long as you have um, clarity in what what is and is not allowed in your group then then they don't have to kind of guess you know or, or be you want consistency, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. So make sure that the admins in your group are all kind of following the same protocol and that you're treating everyone the same way.
Yeah. And, and you've got to be able to discuss things as admins and moderators. You have to be able to discuss things outside that happen in the group, outside the group. Now, the simplest, you can just put together a messenger uh, channel, invite everybody to the Facebook messenger and people can talk about things there. As you grow, then you can move over onto something like Slack. And that gives you greater opportunities than Messenger because you can actually categorize messages. And I'm that's. Actually, I, I'm not seeing Slack because I don't remember to go to it. No, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, it's only because I. I um, the, the thing is, if. Michelle, I'm just going to take that off screen and bring Michelle's comment because we're on. If we're, we found that Michelle's saying that she's found us anyway, which is thank you, but didn't get a notification. Uh, Michelle, are you, we're, we're actually broadcasting to the Be Live and Five page, so I'm not sure if she has it set up to to get right. notifications from the Be Live and Five page. A lot of folks watch us over on repurposing. I think we actually have um, a bigger audience there, but we have decided that we're going to do everything under the Be Live and Five umbrella. So we're broadcasting here. So if you're um, interested in watching this broadcast regularly, then go ahead and, and make sure that you uh, set it up so that you get notifications for this page. Um, and Michelle's also saying, you, we're talking about admins and moderators. You've got to trust your admins and moderators to make sure that the group, and you've got to be on the same page. And that's what we're just saying, that uh, you've got to be able to talk on a channel and Messenger is the favorite because it's part of Facebook and it's a lot easier. Once you start moving out of that, then I, I don't visit the Slack channel every day. I've got to be honest. I don't think everybody does. But when there's a private point to be made and you want to document something, then it's a, a, it is easy to use. And I want to say hello to Steve. And uh, uh, Michelle's good. That's good. Yeah, I think um, uh, it, yeah. Slack, so if you if you have a – you're going to have a very large group where you're going to have, you know, 15, 16 moderators like we do on the Belivers group. You are going to have to find another alternative because we started out using the Facebook Messenger and it just gets too cluttered and it's really difficult to find information and to go back to information. So the Slack definitely works better for that. But when you use a third party platform that takes you off of Facebook, then you risk the chance of people not seeing it regularly and that's exactly what's happening with me i feel a little bit out of the loop because i get busy or i forget so i'm gonna have to i don't know i'm gonna have to pin a tab somewhere so that it's always open or something <laughs> well the, the thing is with slack I'm, we, I'm going to check the notifications afterwards because you need to get notified that something's going on don't you you don't want to be annoyed by notifications right but if, you, if there's a setting that you could notify you that would be helpful Hello to everybody who's watching and welcome to, ah, Brian, welcome. And we watched a, we watched a video early today uh, with April and Roy, and uh, we're glad that you spent the time with them yesterday uh, to get everything working. So that's brilliant. And uh, this is, is the team spirit that runs through everybody at Be Live. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, and hey Pete welcome so yes, yeah if you're all welcome to join us if you want to join us on camera there's a link in the post somewhere it's either below or above and you can click us come on camera for five minutes you're all welcome to do so we are talking about uh, Facebook groups this is Facebook groups part two part one being last week um, but we'll talk about anything really we we Generally, yeah, we get off topic a lot. We, um, yeah. <laughs> but speaking we, of that, what's next on the agenda for? All right, okay. The next on the agenda, and this this is the crucial thing. You create a group, you invite the people, and just uh, stay. You invite the people. What happens next? And um, and Brian is acknowledging uh, that he appreciated the help from April and Roy yesterday so that's absolutely brilliant uh and antonio is reminding me everybody that i'm in wiltshire in the uk and it's tea time you know <laughs> that 
that's fair, a fair comment. Uh, but Angelica and I celebrate Kaffee and Kuchen, Kaffee und Kuchen, uh, not tea and biscuits, it's coffee and cake. So, uh, right, and hello, April. I think that's April. Is that April? Probably. No, that's me. I posted the oh, link. Oh, right. Okay. To make sure that right. there okay. is in the description, but I also wanted to make sure it was right. in the. Uh, Peter saying that he will join us on the show next time. Look forward to it, Pete. Yes, the next definitely. show will be, the next show will be in September, um, because we're taking a summer break. Well, I say summer break. We don't get a summer in England at the moment. I mean, you've got beautiful warm weather, have you not? Lots of rain and storms lately, but yes. Oh dear. <laughs> But yeah, Stephen's taken a, a two-week hiatus to go to Germany and um, spend some time with family. So we'll be back in September. Yep, we will. And looking for, looking forward to the break and looking forward to coming back too. I won't be live streaming whilst I'm away. I've said that on three different shows now. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if you're trying to convince us or yourself. Yeah, both. <laughs> both. <laughs> both. Uh, and Pete's in Coventry. I'm down in Wiltshire. I used to live. Pete, uh, I lived in Stratford for 11 years, which is not too far from Coventry. Um, and there's the link to join us. So the link to join us is in the post. Right. And what we're then going on to was creating engagement. And Peter saying, first comment on that is, I always have a pin post and welcome people into the group. And I think we'd both go with that, wouldn't we? Absolutely. Welcoming people. Um, when you have few members you can invite people individually well first of all let's go back to our mutual friend our friend in Australia who we uh, love and she welcomes everybody into the group individually and uh, Tanya, <laughs> Tanya is, is a rock star and uh, but yeah I don't I don't know I think is and Tanya's running into this problem now because she's grown her group to over 500 members yeah um, once your group starts to get larger and you have, because um, when you first start a group, generally speaking, once you have that um, initial invite where you've invited your friends and, and the people you know that want to follow, after that, people kind of just trickle in. It's yeah. it's kind of slow and growing in the beginning. And then, you know, it, it, it picks up, seems like snowball, just kind of gets bigger and bigger. So you start getting, you go from having one or two people join the group a week to having three or four people a day join the group. Yep. And then at mm -hmm. that point, if you're doing individual welcomes, it becomes kind of a nuisance to the group members because you have, you know, 14 posts, one or right after the other, welcome, 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 welcome. And so what people generally do once they get to that threshold is they'll do a group welcome. So once a week they'll list all the members and say, you know, here's all the people that joined yeah. us, invite those members to then introduce themselves in the comments. So uh, absolutely, I think it's important to welcome members and to have some some way of um, inviting them to introduce themselves. It's really how else are they going to connect in, in the beginning. Um, but pinning the post to the top is great. But really, the first step for getting engagement is naming your group. Really need to think about the name of the group and, and we all like to do fun things and, you know, kind of come up with cutesy names or clever ideas for names. When people are searching for a group, if the group name isn't something to do with what the group is about, it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to find you and join your group. So step one for engagement is really to consider the name of your group and make sure that it has something to do with the topic at hand. Totally agree with that. I mean, I've seen some strange group names, and when you're auto joined to a group and the name is just, well, you just, yeah, to get it right, <laughs> uh, you can change it. So mm -hmm. you don't, it's not set in stone. But if your group changes, purpose changes, then change the name of the group. And always keep the description up to date as well, because people can see that from outside. Right. Right. Just to take a couple of comments, uh, Brian. Right. Can we? address the advantages of creating a group page versus using a personal page as your live video destination. I believe April briefly mentioned the ability to tap into Facebook's analytics as a result. Right. Okay. We're going to go with live video 
And uh, the major point is with Be Live TV, which is where Tina and I are now on the talk show mode, you can go live to your personal profile, which is where your friends are. You can go live to a business page where you have to build the audience or you can go live into a group. So going with the business page first, if you broadcast well, if you broadcast your personal profile, it's great fun, but it's no economic benefit. If you broadcast to your Facebook page, then you're actually building your brand. And every live you do on your page means that people will be on the page and will see your branding and might click an advert and anything can happen. The other thing, the benefit of going onto your page is that you can actually see the number of people who viewed your video, how long they viewed for on average, how many people watched it with sound on? How many people watched it with sound off? How many minutes have been watched? So much information about every single video that goes onto your Facebook business page. It's just overwhelming at times. It is. It? It's, it's really good and valuable information, though, if you study it and, and learn from it. You can learn everything from, you know, who is viewing your page. If they're viewing, it's important to know if, if most of your viewers are viewing with sound off. Um, if you have a, a, a heavy amount of people who are viewing with sound yeah. off, then it's going to be more important for you to either consider closed captioning or at the very least doing what Stephen is doing, and that's putting the the uh, lower thirds, the information down there so we know it, so that they can kind of follow along a little bit. Um, most people will Most people will turn the sound on if they're interested in what what it is that you're talking about. That's one of the reasons it's so important to make sure that you get the title right and so that people know immediately if they want to come on. And using the lower thirds, they'll know that right now we're talking about engagement. So they may want to turn on the sound at this point. But most people scroll with the sound turned off because frankly they're mm -hmm. at work and they're not supposed to be on here. <laughs> or, you know, if, even if you're not at work, if you're just sitting at home and you're scrolling through, it's a little disconcerting to have just random sounds come on and oh, yeah. scrolling through. So people usually just turn the sound off until they find something of interest to them. But if you find that most people are viewing like for longer than a few seconds with the sound off, uh, it might, it might serve you well to consider putting the time into captioning or at the very least time stamping. And um, in the comments below, after you're finished, you can go back and, time step so that people can find the areas that are in, of interest to them. Right. And I, saw, I want to, uh, an extra point, which I discovered yesterday is I'm going to change the screen and hopefully get this right. When the video is finished and the replay is ready to go, you've got the option to go in and edit it. Right. My suggestion is that during the course of the show, you show the card. That's your brand. That's currently on screen now. When you go and edit the video at the end, make sure that the screenshot that displays shows your card. So that even if 200 people actually view it, 200 people have seen your brand. Yep. If we just left it at that, 200 people have seen myself and Tina, which is brilliant. But what you want them to see. Yeah, but they don't know what we're talking about. Now, All right. Okay. Yeah, if they're just seeing our picture. Yeah. The, like I said, that's that's brilliant, but they don't know they don't know what our brand is. They don't know what we're talking about. Something that um, Molly Mahoney, which we bring up a lot in here, because she's just fabulous at at what she does. But she says to like get in a pose like this and sit still for a number of seconds, so that hopefully that will be one of your options for a screenshot. Okay. And then have your branding on the screen like she has her branding on the screen because she uses um, today we're using kind of a fun frame. Um, we're not we don't even have it up at the moment, but Stephen selected a kind of a fun little vacation thing because he's he's going on holiday soon. But if you have a custom frame built, then your branding is on the screen as well as your faces. So if you prefer to have your faces on screen, make sure that you've got some branding on the screen with you um, as well so that when you select your screenshot um, or select your, what is it called? What do they call it? Like, I can't think of what it's called now. <laughs> it's a show card or a, a, um, a cover. Whenever you go into Facebook and you make the selection. 
yeah, to, to what's going to actually be showing on the screen, whatever that's called. It's out of my head right now. I can't think of it. But when you do that, just make sure that you have your branding on the screen, yeah. whether that's the show card, which is the easy thing to do, or um, a custom frame and logo. Yeah. So when we've completed this video and we can edit it, which is about 10 minutes after it's completed, should go in and I'll choose this as a screenshot. So it's got both our names on the screen and it's got the show graphic as well. So we're identifying. So as I say, if 200 people see it, then they've seen your brand. If only 10 people watch, it doesn't matter. 200 people have seen your brand. So and, if we all do that. It has a thumbnail. So select yep. the thumbnail. <laughs> right. And this is us. And we'll take our names off screen because you know who we are. Right. On, on to uh, catching up with comments now uh, because I'm, 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 we're doing well. Uh, and... Tenko and Tenko, good holiday traveling through Germany. They had, do have good coffee, and the best is in Malaga, but the German coffee is not bad either. And Spanish coffee, yeah, okay, I'll go with that. Uh, but I look forward to the German coffee as well. Right, back on target, we're getting closer. And Peter saying, in the group, use the pin post to welcome people. And we agree on that. And you need to recall work on that, Miss T. I, I think the problem is that when I show comments out of sequence, but Tina and I go, what, what were we talking about at that particular point in time? Um, so I'm gonna... I, I, think, I think I saw that come up when we were talking about um, making sure that oh, you right. named the group something that makes sense. So yeah, you need to really work on that. Yeah. So you, right. Okay. You really, really need to work hard and getting the group name right. As we said, you can also change it. And Pete, thank you, Pete. Uh, I was doing the page and share the links across the groups. Yep, that's brilliant. Just keep sharing. I mean, when people get fed up with your sharing, they will tell you. Until then, my my take is do it. Um, and I, I think going back to the original comment that you shared, um, asking yep. the question about using your personal page versus a group or a business page, um, I definitely think a business page is where you want to broadcast to. The only the only reason I would see to broadcast to a group directly now, because when, keep in mind when you broadcast to a group, particularly if the group is a closed group and generally speaking, most groups are closed, um, then you're not going to be able to share that outside of the group. So if you share, if you go live to your business page, you can share it to your group. The only reason I see to go live directly to a group um, is if you have um, if you have content that is only available for your group. So you have specific content for a group. Say you have a group that's a paid group because people do that. They have you pay to, you know, to, to ha have them as a coach and then they have a private group that their um, clients are a member of that group. And so they share exclusive content into that group that's only for their clients. Um, and we actually do that with one of the firms that I work with. Uh, mm -hmm. but otherwise, um, you're really limiting your audience if you're going live into your group. So keep that in mind, unless you're offering something exclusive that you only want available in that group, you yeah. don't want to go live into the group. Good point. It's a good point. Uh, keep on target in the group and, and your marketing efforts should be outside the group. Totally agree with that. Sound advice. Yeah. You can always uh, share it into the group, what you put on the I page, have... you can then share into the group. So, um, but it, it's more difficult to do it the other way around unless you have an open group. And I think yeah. almost every group I'm a member of is now a closed group. I, I, I only know of one group that went from closed to public um, to get because it was a business group and people were allowed to market. So by going public, it meant everybody could see it. But in general, I agree. Um, and uh, on to Antonio's point, does Facebook always take the image at the end of the video? No, Facebook takes the most. I think Facebook has an algorithm that says find the worst one option <laughs> that you can possibly find and use that one. Um, yeah. No, it doesn't select. It, it just randomly selects one of the, um, I think there's a, I think it gives you around 10 thumbnail options. Yeah. And, and from what I can tell, it just randomly picks one of them. And then, of course, you can go in after the, after everything's said and done, you can go back in and edit and choose one of the 10, or you can actually create your own and upload it. So you could up, just upload your show, co show card 
um, because you're allowed to create your own thumbnail. Yeah, I mean, th there are some people who say you should always have the same image on the show so that when people actually same show card mm -hmm. on the video so that when people see it, they know it's you. Yeah, I'm consistency and branding is, yeah. is, you know, it's valid advice. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Antonio. And Brian, I guess I should clarify that presently the sh live show we do weekly and we'll begin using Be Live platform today is really ministry related and we have participants from around the world. Ah, right, okay, still trying to discover how we can take the best advantage of features available to increase the people we reach. Ah, right, now we're going down to uh, specific topics here. Um, I would still say that the advice is still the same. Create a page, a, a business page for, yeah. when I say business page, a business page isn't always for a business. You can select, it can be for a nonprofit, it can be for a community, it can be for a, pub a public persona. There's lots of options when you create a business page to choose a category that suits whatever it is that you're doing. So create the page for your ministry if you don't have one already and broadcast there. Now you can also choose to create groups and you can even make more than one group. You can make groups specific too. So if you have, um, say you have ministries that, that go overseas and do, mm -hmm. you know, ministry overseas. So if you have a mission trip and you just want to create a group specifically for the people who are interested in the mission trips, then you can do that. And that's a way to segment your larger group down and then, um, and then create content specifically for, that group um, that you wouldn't necessarily put, or you might also put it on your main page, but then you would make sure that you also put it in the group because the truth is, especially the larger your page gets, not everyone's going to see what you put on your page. But if someone has elected to become a member of your group, more than likely they're going to get the notification and see what you put in the group. Yeah. Uh, so it's, that's why it's so important to, to be really specific and kind of make sure that you have a niche for the groups that you're in because People would just leave the groups if they're too generic and there's too much content that's irrelevant to them. So by keeping it very specific, you don't have to worry about people leaving because the content's not relevant. I mean, you, you do have the option to, to go on the page to reach globally mm -hmm. and then do a, what we tend, what we started to do, we've got to go back to the blab days because we're only two days short of the blab anniversary. In the blab days, there used to be every, when people did a show, they did the show and it was public to everybody and everybody could see it. Now, we've got the same principle on Facebook. If it's on your business page, by default, it's public. You can't make anything private on your business page. And then afterwards, there was an after show and the after show was private. So you can have the main show on your page, exactly as Tina said, and then do an after show where people discuss the content of your broadcast in the group. Yeah, because yeah. remember, you, you can broadcast 24 seven. So if you do a half hour show on your page, and then a quarter hour show in your group, you're actually meeting both requirements. If you find in doing that, it's a, it's a alpha beta test, isn't it? Which is attracting the most attention. Yeah, and you can, I think, um, you know, I'm kind of glad that that the example that was mentioned was a ministry because the ministry is is one example of of an entity that would have several groups it would make sense for you to have several groups so you could have a group for mission trips you could have a group for prayer requests you could have a group um you know uh even a, a book club kind of a thing so there's lots of different groups and niches that you can kind of narrow it down to now the thing about that is then you have to create content for all of these different groups. Uh, so I'm not saying go and create, five, create 500 groups if you don't have the time or resources to, to be able to provide those groups with content. But that is one of the um, instances where you would have kind of segments because I talked earlier about segmenting um, your audience and ministry would be one example of where it would make sense to have audience segments and that's it doesn't always make sense for that i mean my business is social media and so i'm probably not going to have you know more than one or two groups that are going to be relevant to, to what i'm doing but other businesses can and um if you have a retail business you can have a group for customer support you can have a group for sales you can have a group for um 
for complaints. I mean, you, could, you know, that would probably go into the customer service, but you can have groups specific to um, a specific. I hate when my brain does this to me. It's okay. I, my, br my, my brain works the same way. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, so I have Lyme disease, so sometimes I just get, psh, my brain doesn't let me get my words out of my mouth. Um, products, there, ah. hang in there, I get it. So if you have products that are really popular, so if you're, I don't know, if you're um, someone who makes handmade furniture, but you have like this one little gimmicky, cute thing that everybody loves, you can actually build a group around that and you'd be surprised how, how big those groups get. So anyway, move, <laughs> let's move forward. <laughs> no. I mean, th thank you for the question, Brian, and hopefully we've given you some food for thought. So do some testing, just try it because it's all you can broadcast 24 seven, not suggesting you do, but you can broadcast <laughs> on a page and in the group. And we're talking about creating an engagement and going live into the group is a great way to create engagement. Uh, because if you can go to live into the group, forget the, the, the show that you're playing. Well, in addition to the show that you're planning, just go live in the group just to say hello to people. If you think that if you wanted to write to people in the group and you put a post, then you're not creating engagement because you write the post and you disappear. With a live video in the group, whoever's around at that particular moment will join in. And if you say, right, I'm going to go live in the group at 10 a.m. every Monday and you stick to that, then you'll get a situation where People will know that you're going to go live at 10 a.m. and they will be there ready and waiting. Now, initially, you're going to have to work on it. But if you're patient and you do it consistently, then you'll get to a stage where people do actually expect you to go live. And increasing engagement, there's no better way than video. No, but you have, I mean, when you have a group, you do need to do some things to, to create engagement. My, I have a couple of groups right now that have just been pretty much neglected except for um, except for the groups that I have where the members are very active and then the members kind of keep things going whenever you're MIA for whatever reason and um, so I appreciate the members who have kept one of my groups going but then I have another group that's just kind of been dead in the water since I haven't been able to to get to it but keeping them engaged means live video is always live video is best for engagement wherever you are whether you're on your business page or your group or wherever it's just the best option but you do, you know, you have the option to create polls. You can ask questions. You can give your uh, members opportunities to talk about themselves and what they do. So uh, you definitely want to give them um, the ability and the initiative to, to be engaged. And sometimes all that takes is a themed post. I know a lot of groups have, you know, on Wednesday, we have yep. a wellness post. So, you know. So give us your best recipe for healthy living on Wednesday, whatever. You can pick your own things depending upon your groups. But um, things and questions are a good way to just to get conversation going. And you can do that via video as well as text. Indeed. And when you actually, I've got seen the two questions, uh, Brian and Pete, Pete, I'll be with you in a moment. But the, the thing is that creating engagement, when you first start a group, you, you're the one creating the posts. You're the one posting regularly so that people see it you get people commenting and then effectively by doing that and responding to their comments you give them license to their own posts and you get to a stage where people will post of their own accord and you don't need to go there every day but if you've started a group you do but once you've got people in, involved and engaged then the group will run itself providing you have one guiding principle in the group which we agreed on last week and that's mutual respect. Group doesn't you, need. Sorry. No, you go ahead. Group doesn't need rules. Uh, rules tie people down. Uh, if you say, right, you can't post on the Tuesdays unless it's, you know, well, as soon as you start writing a rule, you're actually saying to people, I know what's good for you. And rules don't work that way. People can take exception to them. So if you have a guiding principle that within the group, people should show respect. So in other words, you do not say something to that you would not like to be. You don't say something you would not like to be heard about yourself. Yeah. So respect to the respect, people. That's it. That, that also covers spamming the group because that's not showing mutual respect if you're spamming the group. Most groups, especially if they're large groups and particularly if they're business related, 
they will have a particular day when you can kind of give your business feel. Um, and so reserve it for that date. But if you, if you are specific, like we said, choose a niche and be very specific about what your group is about. You're not going to have that kind of spammy thing happening because if I am a network marketer, I'm not going to join a group for how to train a Labrador retriever. I mean, no, I know that's no, not, it wouldn't make sense. Um, but if I, if I have a lab and I want to train them, then I know this is one, a group where there are going to be people who are also either already training or are going to be my peers and are wanting to learn. And so by having that very narrow topic, then you, you give people more, I think there's more sense of the comfort and being able to go on and ask questions. And then also to answer questions, because if you've joined a group, you either already have knowledge and you're very interested in it, or you're eager to learn about it. So then you have the two people that you need, the two types of people that you need to make that group go around, which that's the people there needing answers and the people yep. there who can give the answers. Indeed. And then that's how, that's why Be Live is such a great group because people come in and ask questions and then different people answer every day and everybody gets engaged and it's not, it's not the people, it's not moderators are answering the questions, it's everybody in the group. And once you've got a, a sort of ethos where people help people, then you know the group is going to stay uh, and stay vibrant and well. And right, we have a, don't get a whole lot of, of off topic stuff in there. You know, occasionally we'll get, um, you know, a motivational quote thrown up or a, a question yeah. that's not necessarily specific to live streaming, but it is specific still to what people are interested in doing. That's either um, gaining confidence or or building an audience or something of that. So I, I don't see a lot of like really kind of out of the blue stuff right. going on there. It's pretty specific. Right. It is. It is. And we're very fortunate in that. Um, now, this is one from Brian. I'm going to read this slowly to give you time to think because I think you can answer this. I know you can. Just a moment. Are there specific apps or videos available at little to no cost uh, that could cover practical insight to constructing a business page, in quotes, uh, that bring a quality appearance or would be able to be constructed? No, 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 and again, tongue tied. Sorry about this. More readily able by constructing a website such as a dot com destination. So, in other words, can you use a Facebook page and get it as professional as a web page? I think that might be reading that wrong. Yeah, but, oh. and I and I think that's what he's asking. That, that are there apps? Um, there are apps that will help you create videos, um, particularly if you're looking to create. Um, short little marketing pieces, or you're looking to create square videos, which are very popular in mobile. Um, and Mari Smith talks about um, a particular one that's good for that. And I can't remember what it is right now. Okay. Um, but there, as far as for building your pages or an app for that, no, you can find all kinds of articles and advice for making your uh, page look more professional. And that really is just having a good profile picture and a good cover photo. Those are the two main pieces, graphically speaking, that you will need to pay attention to. And then also to make sure that you fully fill out all of the information on your page. So fill out the about section, um, fill out everything that can be filled in. Make sure you fill that out um, completely and, of course, professionally in terms of grammar and spelling and all of that. And then you'll have uh, you'll have a, a very professional appearance on social media. Mm. Is it the same as a website? No, it's not the same. But here's the thing. It's more cost efficient. And it also reaches more people. Because even if you have a website, you still have to drive traffic to that website, which means you're going to need social media to drive traffic traffic back to your website. Um, the, the, the strength of Facebook. Many, I'm not sure everyone needs every business needs a website anymore. Um, I really and I used to, it kills me to say that because I started out in the late 90s as a web developer. So, mm -hmm. um, but unless you have, now as a church, maybe because you can do a really good job of organizing um, your sermons and you can, you know, have a calendar there so that people can see the events all in one glance and that kind of thing. I think you can do just as good 
on social media without ever having to build a website. If you don't have a website already, if you have to choose either or, go with social media all day, every day. That's where the people are. Two billion of them. Uh, the audience is already there. You doing your videos on there. Um, it's Facebook is storing the videos for you free of charge. As soon as you go to your website, you've got to put the videos up on Google. You've got to, it gets more complicated. The simplest way. Absolutely. The simplest way is to and, do Facebook. And fresh content on the website. Um, if you have a content management system like WordPress, then it's feasible that you or someone in your company would be able to maintain that. Um, but it's still a lot more difficult to do than simply updating your social. Indeed. Now, uh, hopefully that's been of help, Brian. If you do have further questions, then then do come back to us. Um, now, Hi, one more thing for Brian. Yeah, sure. Right. If you okay. are a nonprofit, look up Facebook for nonprofits. Facebook offers nonprofits additional extra fun little features and things that they don't allow other people to do. So make sure you check into Facebook for nonprofits if you're a nonprofit. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to come back now. Right. Okay. Uh, and you're most welcome, Brian. And thank you for that. Um, there's a there's a buzz to helping people, and uh, that's just <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Right now, can we help Pete? This is the question. Pete's got. I think his his uh, question is a brilliant one. And. How to create a viral video. Pete, do you know the answer or do you want us to give you one? Uh, and there you are, Michelle. <laughs> saying you're phenomenal. <laughs> and April's blushing, but rightly so. Right, now get let's go back to back to uh, okay. No, not not hang on. All the comments keep moving. Thank you for all the comments. <laughs> Right, Pete says how to create um, create viral video. Um, if you've got an answer, Pete. Uh, all right, you want us to give you an idea for creating a viral video? <laughs> but <laughs> uh, all right, okay. You can't do something terrible and record it. Oh, it, it's it's the, the the viral videos, uh, the ones that people find shocking or amusing, and it, there's the two polar opposites. It goes viral because it shocks you, or it goes viral because it amuses you. And uh, <laughs> right, okay, and and Steve is commenting, and I, I tend to agree with Steve that it costs money to actually create a viral video on purpose. Uh, I mean, if you if you look at some of the brands when they do advertising campaigns, they do a lot of testing before they release one that will go viral. I mean, if you think, let's they, they think of two times. If you think of, of Christmas time, you know that certain companies are going to do Christmas adverts and they're going to do blockbusters because they spent millions on the Christmas advert and it will go viral. It'll go viral on television. It'll go viral on social media because they paid the big bucks. Yeah. I mean, we look yeah. forward to the Christmas adverts in the UK because we get we get four stores, four national stores, all competing for advert of the year. Well, here um, it's actually Super Bowl. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the Super Bowl is where they spend the big bucks to get the the viral ads. And now, there, I I don't believe anyone. If someone tells you, a marketing agency tells you that they can create viral viral content for you without spending a whole lot of money, <laughs> no. don't believe them. I don't believe there is a, um, I don't believe there's a formula because even if you take all of the pieces of the puzzle and we know what, what types of content go viral, even if you put all of those pieces together, there's still no guarantee that it's going to pick up and take off. Um, and sometimes stuff that you would never in a million years think will be viral. And I see stuff shared in my feed all the time that will have millions of viewers. And I'm just like, why are people sharing this? Yep. You know, it's Indeed. like annoying or stupid or whatever. And I don't get it. So 
um, there are some yeah. really great pieces of viral viral videos that everybody loves. Yeah. You know, Charlie bit my finger. That was one of the first things that I remember being like hugely um, viral, and everybody's seen it. If you mention that, almost everybody knows what you're talking about. Um, it's, I mean, that was cute. So you have animals and kids and humor. Um, mm -hmm. If you have those pieces in there, you have a better likelihood. If you have something that's shocking or terrible, uh, that gives you a better likelihood. How do you create that? I don't know how you create no. that. Most of the stuff that's viral has been unintentional. It, it's random, isn't it? It's random. It's, pick, it's something that, that resonates with a group of people. That group of people share it. It resonates with a group of people. And it's mushrooms like that. And, and you can't plan for it. But Pete says he's going to do it. So we're going to put that on the screen. Pete, <laughs> we're going to take a screenshot of that. But we wish you luck. And if we can help in any way, then, then just let us know. And Stephen, on a serious note. Uh, right, OK. And uh, find traffic volume on this topic answer a need and you'll get uh, lots of visitors over time the secret is the need okay and the more need equals on search traffic gives more views now this is basically the secret of success on youtube uh in the on youtube majority of your traffic will come from search and getting the keywords right and getting the right keywords is a science. Mm -hmm. And that's why people get success on YouTube because they use the right key phrases. I mean, if you if you go to YouTube and say, uh, how do I how do I fix a leak leaking tap? Then if that's your title and you that's the way to do it. So anyway, yeah, we don't it. short answer is that I don't know. Well, I mean that's a principle of marketing, you know. Yeah. You you find the pain points and you give them solutions to their pain points. I mean, it's just a general marketing principle, but you know, even if, even when you look on YouTube and you see videos that have had millions of, of views, that yeah. still doesn't make them viral. It's two different things. Something that goes okay. viral is, right. is different from something that's just very popular or, or especially for the how to things and the listicles. Those are always really popular and they'll end up with lots and lots of views, but, a, a viral piece that's that's different than than something that's just has a lot of users been popular i yeah, mean okay. if you take take pewdiepie for example he's you know one of the most famous youtubers out there and one of the most profitable and every time he posts something it, it ends up with millions of views it's just going to because of his name that doesn't that doesn't mean that it's viral so no okay pete, i take your of point the, one of the i confuse the two yeah but I mean, but people do. It's just it's two different. It's two different things. Hard to wrap your head around because something that's gone viral may not have as many views as PewDiePie's last video that wasn't viral. He just happens to have you know a billion people that follow him. Um, but something that you can do to make your video more popular and maybe get it to go viral is to um, watch trending topics and make mm -hmm. videos that relate to those trending topics because. Yeah. Um, they'll get shared around if something's trending. We wish you every success, Steve. And as I said, you're feeling lucky. That's good. Uh, oh, another comment's coming. Just a minute. <laughs> right. And uh, I, ah, right. That's the Steve. I feel lucky. Comment. Then we've got a, a comment for Pete's comment. Then we've got Steve's comment. Uh, Edie, this is viral, but it's not bad. I answered the question: How to win at risk. And then there's a link to the YouTube video. So check out that video uh, is, yeah. and have a look at Steve's video. If you're and doing then Brian, on yeah. YouTube, and I suspect as as our search feature get, gets better on Facebook, Facebook, we're talking to you, make the search function better. Um, as it gets better, people will people love how tos, do it yourself, and mm. list. So five ways to I don't know, five ways to shine a shoe, whatever, whatever your topic is, doesn't matter. So those those lists that give you five ways, 10 ways, whatever, um, how to, and then do it yourself are very, very popular. And so if your video is about, obviously if your video doesn't fit into that, don't name your video that if it doesn't make sense. But what we're talking about today, as you all know, we the title of the show was how to grow your live tribe using 
Facebook groups because we know that putting how to in there will gain us more followers, more people will view it. We could have done five ways to grow your live tribe and it would have been the same thing. And so, you know, maybe the next one we'll do, we'll try the list and see if that performs better than, than this. But the great thing about all of this is that the barrier to entry is very low. The cost is very low or nothing. So play with it, experiment. You have an excellent opportunity to do split test marketing that in the past, 10 years ago, yeah. would have cost you tens of thousands of dollars to do. And now you can do it for little or nothing. And Pete, Pete is saying, well done, Steve. And I agree. And uh, under 50,000 views is brilliant. And when we get, when I, when we, <laughs> whenever we get a video with that amount of views, we'll be, uh, we'll be knocking on your door and saying, it was hard work because you don't just get there overnight. And we realize that. Uh, and uh, Brian is saying, thanks again for all the practical and insightful information. Looking forward to more interaction with you both. So are we and stepping away for now to promote, prepare for our show tonight, uh, live at five. It will be our first time with a guest using be live. Wish and well. Brian, quick tip for you. When you go live tonight, go to the be livers group. Find the post today for where to post your broadcast and post it there. And the, the V Livers will come out and support you. Indeed. And so we'll, we'll be there to watch your first broadcast. And wish you every success. And uh, three things you need patience, persistence, and a sense of humor. If you've got those three, <laughs> then you'll have a successful broadcast. Well, we're coming up towards the hour. That, this, Sessions just fly by. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> do we wow. actually get through the agenda this time? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've, we, I keep what keeps happening is that every week I copy the agenda, the old agenda to the new agenda, and we add to it, and we never get through it. So, <laughs> one the the point that, that you did what you wanted to make. So, if you just go to that point, and then there we are. Joining I mean, other groups. The, joining other groups is a great way to market your live um, and to grow your live tribe. Now, don't just go join any group. Look for groups that it makes sense for you. Unfortunately, because most groups are private, you're going to have to join the group first to, to get an idea. I mean, you can read the description. But the best thing to do is join the group. Go kind of do a run through the feed and see what's there. And see if it's for you. If it's not for you, you can just quietly leave. Nobody's going to notice that you were there and left. It's perfectly fine. Um, if you think the group is for you, then do a search in the group. Search for keywords in your market and start answering questions. Look for the posts that are there and get engaged in the conversation in a meaningful way. Um, add value to people. Um, there are people in the groups are going to be asking questions. If your expertise is in dog training, we'll stick with that motive, not motive, since that's what I've been talking all day. For some reason, I don't even have a dog, whatever. No, I picked that. <laughs> if you're, you know, if your expertise is in dog training, look for dog lover type groups. Get in the group and get engaged. It does take work. It doesn't mean that you can just go join the group and then start spamming it. Or even if they allow you to post, say every Tuesday, they allow you to post your business. If you're not engaged in that group any other time other than on Tuesday when you post what you do, nobody cares. Nobody's going to look. If you're engaged in the group and you're looking for questions and looking for opportunities to join the conversation and conversation in a meaningful way where you're adding value and answering questions, people will follow you and they will find you and they'll find out what you're doing. And you can even um, possibly even share your live to that group if you ask permission from the owner and it's relevant that's the key thing. If the group is about dogs and you're a dog trainer and you ask the group owner, may I share this group, this video, even if it's on Tuesday during the marketing thing, then that's fine. You can share it there. But wherever you are, if you're in a group, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Instagram, if you are doing keyword searches and looking for opportunities to join the conversation, wherever that conversation is happening, you will grow your following. Sound advice. Absolutely. And we got the topic in. <laughs> Pete said, uh, give oh, us yeah. Gain. Give, give, give us gain. We, we, yeah, pay it forward. We, 
totally agree on that principle um right okay well there we are <laughs> right um, on time <laughs> right on time okay uh and uh, pete saying don't try and sell into groups that's a good principle to uh, to finish on don't try and sell that to persuade people to know like and trust you and become the go-to person and they will respect your knowledge and will ask for your services and that's by far and away the best way on social media absolutely because the person the people who are in that group maybe none of those people want your service they don't need it they don't have a dog no. i don't know whatever the reason is they don't need or want your service if you've been giving to the group and you've been providing value and you've been authentic then if one of their friends says gosh i got this new puppy and he's just you know he's driving me crazy he chews everything up then they're going to say oh pete he's in my group and he does dog training yeah. let me connect you with him and so that's how that works and you don't have to you don't have to be uh, the salesy weirdo as molly says <laughs> i love that term don't be the salesy weirdo yeah uh, just you know share your expertise and people will find you uh pete we'd love to love for you to join us yes pete we're putting you on the calendar for september september yeah so done done deal <laughs> done deal and well thank, well <laughs> <laughs> okay so to everybody who's watched Tina and I would like to say thank you to everybody who's commented we say thank you and we'll see everybody again in September will we not right yeah just just a reminder we'll put something up I'll post next week while Stephen's away reminding people that we are on hiatus until Stephen returns um, the first part of September and until then, we'll be watching your broadcast, or I will. I don't know what Stephen's going to be doing. But... I, I might watch a couple of broadcasts. <laughs> yeah, but he I watch your broadcast. <laughs> I look out for your for your broadcasts and and April's, and we'll take it from there. <laughs> Do you know? Welcome, welcome back. And see, we didn't mean to make such a, a rapid departure. <laughs> um, Steve, thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you to everybody who's watched. We really enjoy being here on Thursdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. UK. And we look forward to being you, with you again in September. This has been Tina and Stephen. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. What happened then was...